Hi everyone. Right, posting um, an interesting development to um, well the Bedini system, but uh, I think I'm getting to the point where I can't actually call it a Bedini system anymore. Right, um, a few people have been experimenting with uh, north and south poles um, on a Bedini rotor um, in order to get uh, some generation done. Uh, now, the Bedini circuit itself only pulses on the north side. Um, now, I've seen this um, on the TEAP forums, um, I, think it's, I think it's called Sequential Bipolar Circuit or something, and I looked at it, and yes, I can understand what's going on, but I can't help but think there's a better way of doing it. And I think I might have created one. Uh, so let's take a look at a circuit diagram. One laptop. Do, 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 do. Just close up. Right. Get everything in. There we go. Straight away you can see it's symmetrical, with the exception of this bit over here. That's just uh, that's just your pot. So what we've got is trigger side here going into a pair of optocouplers which are reversed so when the sur when the current flows one way it activates one um, optocoupler and when it flows the other way it activates the other one now again you've got uh, um, transistor there um, which I've put in as a 3055 and um, you can use whichever one you want one there, one there and two batteries Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way of doing it from one battery. Uh, well, not easily anyway. Um, but there we go. And we've got two diodes here. Oop. Behave. Now those two diodes there allow the back EMF to flow into the opposite battery. So this battery here is activated through the coil via this transistor. Right. The back EMF via this uh, diode flows into the opposite battery. Right, and again for that battery it's activated by that transistor and that it, um, diode allows the back EMF to flow into that one. So the back EMF is constantly flowing between the two batteries uh, in an alternating fashion. Now obviously uh, pot on there for tuning Right, so, what happens? Um, well, the theory is that this top dead centre, um, it reverses the current flow through the trigger coil, which activates the north side, pushing the magnet away. Right, pretty simple. When a south magnet comes along, right, it activates the north side again to pull the magnet in, and then once the south magnet has passed top dead centre, right, it activates the south side to repulse the magnet and push it away. Simple enough. A um, few problems. Let's take a look. As you can see here, a uh, little bit of a mess, so my apologies. You have uh, trigger, drive, and there's two batteries. Okay, two optocouplers there, two transistors there, two diodes across the transistors. Right, simple enough, um, but obviously as I said apologies for the mess. Now, I do have a slight problem with it. Um, there is somewhere in that lot well, an intermittent connection, uh, but I haven't found it yet. Right. Up some power. Do -do 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 -do. Come on. There we go. Oh. Come on, you stupid thing. Right, that's just running on uh, one circuit, one side at the moment. The problem that I have is obviously this uh, 
intermittent connection is causing no end of trouble here. But watch what happens. Right, you can hear it spinning. Right, see both multimeters. Plug it in, and it immediately starts to die. Come on. So it's not drawing that much extra current. It's uh, um, drawing about uh, probably an average of 50 milliamps from each battery. Um, but for some reason, it's dying. Hmm. I think I know why. Let's take a little look. For our zero line, for that, zero volts. Right. You should be able to see that. Okay. We'll put a dot there. That's where the north magnet is at top dead centre. So, going across, right, this is obviously time. God, I need a bigger bench. Time. There we go. Right, so, as the magnet approaches, it creates a voltage. Right, now here's what actually happens. The voltage goes from zero, comes up, and comes back to zero when the magnet is at top dead centre. When it passes, the voltage is reversed. Right? Now, I'll show you this in a minute, but my setup is very, very, very unique. So, there's my, that's north, this one's south. So, what happens is this creates a massive peak there as the south comes up. Right. Simple enough? Okay. So, at this point here, right, that is where we're getting a south pulse there. At this point here, we're getting north pulse. Right, then of course here, again, that's another south pulse to push it away. Now, on my setup, right, there's my north magnet, there's my south one, and the next north is like somewhere over here, basically. Right, so this comes down, hits zero, and then new, new marker as well. Right. And then you've got a gap here. Of course, yeah, that's right. I just had to think about it then. Yeah, I end up with another pulse preceding the north magnet down again, and then the next south one's here, which does that. Right, now here's the problem. Right. At this point here, and this point, every time the magnet's at top dead centre, right, because of the lag with the optocouplers, right, we now get an overlap between the north pulse circuit and the south pulse circuit, which means it ends up shorting. Right, that's a big problem. Right, so. Does it work? Yes and no. Um, in part two of this, um, I'll explain why my magnets are arranged how they are, um, and go through it a bit more. Okay? Have fun.